In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at our modeled guidance. Today's video is going to be a little bit quicker. It's going to be coming out a little bit later. Uh, yesterday's video did so well, and I think I ended up uploading it at like 4 or 5, and it just seemed to do better. I, there was nothing different about the title or the thumbnail necessarily. Um, it just did a lot better at that time. So I'm going to try even later today. I, I want to experiment with how it does. Uh, again, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter video because I'm trying to get it out pretty quickly today. Uh, so we are taking a look here uh, at a low over Missouri. Uh, that's actually going to be a little bit earlier. So we're going to go ahead and move it forward just to probably more like now uh, where the low is transferred mostly over to Ohio and Indiana. We have a bit of a cold front there, warm front here. Uh, and it, it probably is stretching a lot more like this. Uh, more realistically cold front there. So there is some warmer air. You've probably felt it moving along the eastern United States, even warmer tomorrow, actually. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. Some snowfall stretching, stretching across all the way from uh, Wyoming, the Dakotas, through into Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and then into New England here. We see a lot of snowfall. Obviously, ice and mix in between, and then rain underneath. That is the look at this point. As we reach towards into tomorrow afternoon here, what we end up seeing is a very large ridge in the east and a massive trough in the west. So we're seeing plenty of cold air, cold enough in fact that between the California and Mexican border there is snowfall happening there. So extreme cold air happening out west and very, very unseasonably warm temperatures here in the east. I know in Virginia, our record high for, for February in general uh, is around, depending on where you're at, the, the low to mid 80s. So here in Southeast Virginia, it's closer to 85, probably further inland. It might be a little bit cooler than that. Um, and we have a decent chance of stretching into the 80s, low 80s, possibly mid 80s, uh, depending on the model you look at. So I know a lot of folks are going to be pushing not only the record for specifically February 23rd, but actually just the, the February record high in general, which is crazy, crazy, crazy to think about. Uh, most of these records have been, you know, have stood the test of time for the most part, but that's that's a really interesting one to possibly break. We do see a storm system develops behind all this in the, in the southeast, deeper south in the south central United States here as well. So we see these areas primarily seeing these uh, storms moving across. We can see a very strong storm taking place over California here. This is leading towards snowfall, especially in the southern mountainous regions of California and Nevada there and overall it's a little bit of a quieter period here for a little while until we get this major storm around monday the 27th we've been kind of eyeballing this one very closely for severe weather along this cold front in here uh we've been talking about this one perhaps a week or even longer i've pointed out that severe weather appears to be possible along the cold front here uh sure enough the storm prediction center has uh, a very very decent shot at severe weather it'll probably translate into an enhanced or even moderate risk here uh, for around this time frame uh, underneath this low as it's a 9, not 78 better yet. So that's a very, very strong low uh, and definitely poses a very, very large risk of severe weather. So possibly our biggest severe weather event of the year so far. Uh, and as we move on, we see this low stay so strong, 981 here still. We have a secondary low setting up 1001. What we're eventually going to see is this low transfer offshore. What I mean is most of the energy is going to transfer to this low from this one up here. Um, it's not gonna move in that direction, it's just gonna transfer that energy. Now, we're gonna see two differences here for a potential major northeast snowstorm. Uh, the European model here has that energy transfer much earlier on, and this low off the east coast becomes our primary low. I'm circling it in, trying to make a circle there. That low becomes the primary low in time for very cold air to move in and snowfall to develop here for the northeast. The GFS model, which we'll take a look in a little bit, uh, does not have that happening. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. But what we see happen is this energy is able to transfer pretty early on. This one right here is still the primary low by this point, but we're seeing a lot more of the energy over here. 992 millibar low pressure center, enough to where we switch over to snowfall for all of these areas and get a major snowstorm there. And already by time of reaching about 8 p.m. on the 28th here, we have this one as the primary low, a 985 millibar low pressure center. And what ends up happening is we see this cold air damming down the east coast here on the western edge of the low. And this is able to develop snowfall for most of the northeast. Very interesting setup there. And we actually get a bit of a second major snowstorm perhaps here, 988. Maybe winter trying to make a little bit of a comeback here in the northeast as we get a second storm there. Also, 
a very strong low, 977 millibar low pressure center here in the deeper south. Very interesting how we've gone from more moderate storms all winter long to these major lows, 988, 977. So a lot of storms in the 970s and 980s here working their way through the central and eastern United States over the next 15 or so days and probably in the past 15 days or so as well. So we're going through a stretch of very major storms. On that one, as you can see, towards the end of our model run, right around March 4th here, develops into a very, very intense snowstorm here throughout most or portions at least of that kind of Ohio Valley into upper Midwest region. Uh, and we see that just getting started by time we're reaching the kind of middle morning of Saturday, March 4th. Again, 973 here, 996 right here. So this is the primary low, but perhaps this one will end up taking over and then we get another northeast snowstorm. I just noticed what that looks like, so we're going to delete that. Uh, we see that this one right here um, is very strong at this point, though. So it may not transfer. It might become mostly in Ohio Valley and Great Lakes snowstorm. But nevertheless, this is a very, very strong storm. And I think there's a lot of interesting features here. But you notice the jet stream. Uh, very interesting curvature here, indicative of very intense low pressure systems and, and storms in general. We see also some low trying to low pressure trying to set up in there, but we see warm, moist air rushing into this storm. Uh, and definitely that is playing a big role in why this looks so major at this point. But I am extremely excited to track these storms as there is a few here that again are, are heavy hitters, definitely very exciting stuff coming up. I mean, whether I expect to see snow or not, I am excited to talk about these major storms. And I think this is going to be a much more interesting period to talk about, um, you know, even than what we've dealt with. Now, let's take a look at that total precipitation because I think this tells the full story here. We see a lot of storminess moving on shore of the west here, not really making its way too far inland, but we do see storminess. Uh, and we see throughout this model run many lows heading over here. Um, and I'm going to draw it in a different color perhaps here to kind of show you what's happening. But we see kind of uh, transferring happening in the blue of, of that kind of low pressure. And then again in the black right here we see the low transferring to here. So, uh, and, and that kind of carries up the coast just like that or more offshore. So that's why we see uh, quite a bit out here because these storms hitting in the West, but again, they don't make their way too far inland. We see these storms rising up. So that's what causes most of this precipitation here. And then a lot of this in the Northeast is because of that transfer that happens there. So I hope this is, this has been a little bit more of a complex topic to go over, but I hope this makes sense. Uh, I'm trying to do my best to, to kind of educate you guys on that. But in general here, what we usually go by is the reds are going to be your above average precipitation for the next 10 days. Mostly, it is hard to say because a lot of people vary in the amount of precipitation that's their average. For instance, probably Arizona here dealing with above average precipitation and probably Seattle area de dealing with below average precipitation, even though they're both in red. So it does depend on your average, obviously. Um, obviously, Washington expecting to see a ton and, and perhaps even more than this on an average 10 day period. And then Arizona not expecting too much, perhaps again, less than this in a 10 day period. So I hope that makes sense. Total snowfall here, uh, we can see that this translates to a large amount of snowfall out west. That's no surprise there, so we will not focus too much on that. I do want to note that there's definitely quite a bit reaching far south of that uh, U.S.-Mexican border there in the southwest, which is usually, again, indicative of very cold air in the west. We talked about that a minute ago. And also, I think another interesting point here, and we'll actually zoom in for this one, uh, just so we can take a really clear look at this. I want to make sure we get the take first off a look at the Northwest. This actually gets the whole point across, I'm sure. So uh, very coastal areas as far south as central California here seeing snowfall. So perhaps even the San Francisco Bay area seeing uh, some flakes. This is definitely a more rare occurrence and uh, is, is truly a testament to how cold it is expected to be uh, over the next 10 days. And I think it's a, a really good uh, point to drive home. And it, and it kind of uh, puts the icing on the cake to how cold of a winter this truly has been out West. I, I think this is just, you know, kind of, again, that icing on the cake factor here uh, definitely tells the story. Uh, and I do want to talk about our central regions here because also throughout this corridor, there's uh, multiple storms actually moving across this area. One that moves up like this, as you can see, uh, and then we have our one moving across kind of currently actually as well. Uh, and all these pink areas are expecting 10 to maybe even uh, 20 inches of snowfall. So all of these pink areas in here. 
And the blue areas are going to be your two to three feet. And those pinks over New England is maybe even approaching three to four feet, perhaps. Um, so we can see that as these lows kind of uh, respectively, we're going to see one do this, perhaps one do this. Uh, so they're moving in a, a very similar fashion, but both transfer and then again, rise up the coast. And as long as this transfer here is the main feature happening. So again, these are weakening. So these are, there's going to be a lot of arrows going on. These are on the downtrend kind of, and these are on the uptrend of intensity. That's what allows for the cold air to pour in and most of that snowfall to occur in the Northeast. If these lows stay stronger, we could expect major snowfall within this circled area, even beyond what we're seeing here. Uh, so this is a more fair share solution, uh, but definitely if we see what more like the GFS is showing, I'm sure the West is going to see more. So let's see how this one plays it out. Uh, I want to get to this one and look at how strong this one still is. 977 millibar low pressure center. Uh, we really don't even see the secondary low setting up at all. Uh, and what this does is uh, we hardly get a snowstorm in the Northeast. Here, as you can see, we get one finally developing, but it's really exclusive for Northern New England and we get a lot less that way. Um, and as we move towards storm number two, this one just looks a lot less intense. Uh, and then we get more of like a kind of just true nor'easter here actually is a 988 millibar low pressure center uh, with plenty of snowfall happening here and, and perhaps uh, some of your larger cities, Philadelphia, DC, New York, Boston, but also your more interior northeastern region seeing this as well by about March 5th. Um, and then we get this 985 down to 981, perhaps even 980 here for uh, Canada and a very strong cold front probably would bring some thunderstorm activity down here. This has just been a very, very interesting pattern. And I think the only connection I can draw between that European model run and then this now GFS model run is that they both have such strong lows with it. Uh, again, seeing so many lows, probably a handful, about five, uh, dropping at least into the 980s and perhaps even the 970s here. So very, very strong storms compared to what we've been seeing are on the way. And I think that's the biggest takeaway here. And then potential for snowfall seems to be on the rise. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see if that actually does play out that way. Anyway, thank you guys so much for always tuning in. I appreciate all of you so much. Be sure to like the video, by the way. Uh, also, be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day for the most part. Also, be sure to hit the bell icon for daily notifications so you never miss one. Also, be sure to leave a comment down below because I love hearing from you guys so, so much. And I will see you guys in the next video.